So here we're looking for the volume of a solid below the hyperboloid to find by z is equal to 9 minus the square root of 1 plus x squared plus y squared and above the xy plane to find by z is 0 over the region r such that r is defined by the set of all points r theta where r is greater than or equal to 1 less than or equal to 2 and theta is greater than or equal to negative pi by 2 less than or equal to pi by 2. So here we are finding the volume by polar coordinates. So remember, if we're using polar coordinates to find the volume, this is going to be a double integral. So we have our volume is defined by the double integral over r. And our integrand here is going to be the difference between the two curves because we're only working with double integrals. So we'll say the integrand is f of r theta minus g of r theta dA, so our, differ our area differential here. Keep in mind that f is our top curve and g is the bottom curve. So we know that the volume of the solid is below the hyperboloid, right, so that's going to be our top curve, and it's above the xy plane, making that our bottom curve. So we can fill this in and say our volume integral here is, I'm going to keep my outer bounds as theta, so that's minus pi by 2 to positive pi by 2. The inner integral's bounds are r, so that's from 1 to 2. And we have our top curve, which is the hyperboloid, 9 minus the square root of 1 plus x squared plus y squared. And we should, we'll use parentheses here for safety, for good practice. And that's minus the bottom curve. The bottom curve is just 0 here, so we don't, we'll get rid of that in our next step. And then don't forget, with polar coordinates, the differential is r dr d theta. So we need a couple things here. We want to simplify the integrand and also notice that we've got this x squared plus y squared, which is our Cartesian coordinates. So we're going to need to replace that with its equivalent radius squared. So the volume integral that we need to solve is simplified to v is equal to the integral from minus pi by 2 to positive pi by 2, the integral from 1 to 2, and this is our integrand, simplified is 9 minus the square root of 1 plus r squared, and then our differential is r dr d theta. And we're ready to start evaluating. So the first thing I'm going to do is evaluate the inner integral. So we're going to integrate with respect to r first. All right, so we are working with the integral from 1 to 2 of 9 minus the square root of 1 plus r squared, r dr. And so looking at this, we know we're going to need u substitution. So again, there are multiple u's that we can use here. I'm going to choose my u to be the radicand. So u is going to be 1 plus r squared. So du dr gives us 2r. And then solving for dr, we are left with du by 2r is equal to dr. In addition to this, I'm going to change the bounds. So remember, we can think of that u we defined up here 
as a function of r. So u of r is defined as 1 plus r squared. So we want to rewrite these two bounds for r in terms of u. So u of 1 is 1 plus 1 squared, which gives us 2. And then u of 2 is 1 plus 2 squared, which gives us 5. And so the bounds on u are 2 to 5. And they are in ascending order, so we're all set and ready to go. So plugging our u substitutions in, the integral becomes the integral from 2 to 5 of 9 minus the square root of u multiplied by r. And then our dr here is now replaced with du divided by 2r. And so we can see the r in the numerator cancels with the r of the denominator. I'm going to pull out a common factor of 1 half. So this is 1 half times the integral from 2 to 5 of 9 minus, let's rewrite the square root of u as u to the 1 half du. And we're ready to integrate. So we have 1 half multiplied by 9 times u minus u raised to the 3 halves. And we multiply by the reciprocal of the exponent, 2 thirds. And we're ready now to evaluate from 2 to 5. So I have 1 half. Substituting in 5 first, we have 9 multiplied by 5 minus 2 thirds times the square root of 5 cubed. Please note that you could also do 5 cubed and then take the square root, or whatever you think is easier. And now we want to evaluate when u is 2. So I have 9 times 2 minus 2 thirds times the square root of 2 cubed. And so we can simplify. So I have 1 half multiplied by... So 9 times 5 gives us 45 minus 2 thirds. Uh, we can simplify the square root here. And keep in mind that this is saying the square root, or we're multiplying the square root of 5 together three times. Right, so we can see we have the square root of 5 squared, which leaves us with 2 thirds multiplied by 5 times the square root of 5 minus 9 times 2 leaves us with 18 minus 2 thirds. And then again, simplifying our radical, this becomes 2 times the square root of 2. So let's see, we can simplify within here. I'm going to distribute this negative to both terms there simultaneously. So this becomes 1 half multiplied by 45 minus 10 times the square root of 5. We'll divide it by 3. And then we have minus 18 plus 4 times the square root of 2 divided by 3. And so we're ready now to combine up some like terms. So we can do 45 minus 18. And we can also combine this minus 10 times the square root of 5 and 4 times the square root of 2 divided by 3 because they have the same denominator. So this will become 1 half multiplied by 45 minus 18 leaves us with 27. And then we can say this is plus, so I'm going to rewrite this as 4 times the square root of 2 minus 10 times the square root of 5 divided by 3. So then what I'm going to do here is just simplify a tiny bit further to make our calculations a little nicer. So I have 1 half multiplied by 27, and then notice here that 4 times the square root of 2 and 10 times the square root of 5 have a common factor of 2. So let's pull that out to the front. So this is 27 plus 2 times 2 times the square root of 2 minus 5 times the square root of 5 
divided by three. So now when I go ahead and I distribute this one half here through to both terms, this two will cancel. So we are left with, this is one half times 27, which leaves us with 27 halves. And then plus, this would be one half multiplied by two, times two times the square root of two minus five times the square root of five, all divided by three. And the twos cancel each other out to one, leaving us with a slightly nicer expression. We have 27 halves plus two times the square root of two minus five times the square root of five divided by three. And you could combine those to one single expression if you like, otherwise this is perfect. And now we're ready to evaluate the outer integral. So our outer integral is with respect to theta. So we now have the integral from minus pi by 2 to positive pi over 2 of what we just found, 27 halves plus 2 times the square root of 2 minus 5 times the square root of 5 divided by 3 d theta. So what's nice about this is this whole expression that we found up here when we integrated with respect to the radius is a constant. So we just simply apply the constant multiple rule. So this becomes 27 halves plus 2 times the square root of 2 minus 5 times the square root of 5 divided by 3. And that's multiplied by the variable theta. And we're ready now to evaluate from minus pi by 2 to positive pi over 2. So give ourselves a little more room. So keeping that constant right on the outside, we have 27 halves plus 2 times the square root of 2 minus 5 times the square root of 5. And that's all divided by 3. Now we are multiplying this by pi over 2 minus a minus pi by 2. So those two negatives will create a positive. So when we add those together, we are just left with pi. So we have a final, I'm going to pull that pi to the front. So we have pi multiplied by 27 halves plus 2 times the square root of 2 minus 5 times the square root of 5 divided by 3. And since this is a volume, we would want our units cubed. So this is a great answer. If you wanted to find a common denominator, and looking at these uh, denominators here, we would need to multiply the numerator and denominator of 27 halves by 3 and the numerator and denominator of the second expression by 2. So an alternative answer would be pi multiplied by 81 plus 2 times 2 times the square root of 2 minus 5 times the square root of 5. And that would all be divided by 6. And again, don't forget your units cubed. So either of these answers are beautiful.